What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today. And we have got Napoleonic War series for you and we've got 1806 Napoleon Smashes Prussia by Epic History TV. A link will be in the description box down below for his content. We love his content over this channel. Yeah. We're really, really enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to sort of seeing what happens in this episode. This series has been good so far. Um, Napoleon's just insanely genius really yeah isn't he? i mean the battle the siege of too long was just insane yeah. like we're seeing how he just started it's just unbelievable to see how a 24 year old from back then has yeah, been yeah. able to mastermind such skill yeah yeah and even even the um the Austrinitz video as well mm. that was a good one as well just yeah. so interesting this is only the third series it's quite a long series so i'm really enjoying sort of finding out what's going on and yeah. looking forward to seeing what happens in this video and the next and so on and so forth if you guys are enjoying our content then please like comment subscribe hit that notification bell but we're just going to jump straight into this one let's do this an epic history tv history march collaboration supported by our sponsor the great courses plus in december 1805 on, at the battle of austerlitz napoleon bonaparte emperor of the french won a crushing victory against the, the joint really forces like, really, of austria and russia <laughs> napoleon yeah. now dominated europe yeah, he's got something able about to him. hand out spoils <laughs> as he saw fit in february 1806 he sent an army led by Marshal Massena to overthrow the King of Naples, who had dared to side with his enemies, <laughs> Mate. and gave his throne to his own brother Joseph instead. Another brother, Louis, was made King of Holland. <laughs> his German allies, Bavaria and Württemberg, were elevated to the status of kingdoms. While Napoleon made himself protector of the Confederation of the Rhine, a new alliance of German states that would contribute 60,000 troops to his army. Wow, yeah. In recognition hey, just of the new reality, that. Emperor Francis of Austria wants. formally dissolved the Holy Roman Empire. Founded by Charlemagne a thousand years before, but now without influence or purpose. Blimey. Yeah, just destroyed. Austria it. had been humiliated. France remained at war with Britain, Sweden, and Russia. But in the summer of 1806, all eyes were on Prussia. Napoleon is a monster who has emerged from the mine. So Napoleon is a monster who has emerged from the mere. The Prussian king Frederick William III regarded Napoleon with deep mistrust and had been about to join the coalition against him when news arrived of its disastrous defeat at Austerlitz. Okay, so he was going to was heavily him. influenced by his wife, the celebrated and popular Queen Louise, who detested France and Napoleon. Uh -huh. She led the influential war party at the Prussian court. Okay, Matters he came to a head so over happened. Hanover. A German state, which had belonged to British King George III, been occupied by the French and given by Napoleon to Prussia as compensation for other territorial changes. Hmm. Yeah. Now the Prussians learned that Napoleon had secretly offered to give Hanover back to Britain in exchange for peace. Frederick's advisers now persuaded him that war was the only honourable course. Okay. But Prussia then made a basic strategic blunder, sending an ultimatum to Napoleon without consulting its new allies in the Fourth Coalition. Oh no. Their forces were too far away to help Prussia, who would now face Napoleon's Grand Armée with just the small state of Saxony for support. Oh, you fools. A <laughs> big mistake. This is not good. In 1806, the Prussian army had a fearsome reputation that dated back 50 years to the reign of Frederick the Great. Napoleon, a student of history, regarded it with respect. But Prussia's army had been allowed to rest on its laurels. Its generals were old. Its staff work hindered by bureaucracy okay. and personal rivalries. Its movements ponderous and predictable. 
Prussian soldiers, however, could be relied on to fight with pride and determination, while Prussian cavalry was regarded as amongst the best in Europe. Okay, so they had some, some kind of like... In October 1806, yes. Napoleon invaded Saxony with an army of 166,000 men and 256 guns. Bloody hell. Advancing in three columns, the French crossed the mountain forests of the Thuringerwald, along roads carefully reconnoitred by scouts and spies. Napoleon intended to threaten Leipzig and force a decisive battle with the Prussian right. army, which he believed was near Gera. The Prussians were, in fact, further west, concentrating near Erfurt, on the west bank of the river Saale. Its commander, the Duke of Brunswick, had hoped to threaten the flank of Napoleon's advance. OK, that makes sense. But wrong-footed by, by the, the speed of the Prussians. French, he now ordered a retreat north to find a new defensive line. Oh, but well, they were just too quick, he said. Seems you. But wrong-footed by the speed of the French, he now ordered a retreat north to oh. find a new defensive yeah, line. Yeah, one mistake. On the 10th of October, at Saalfeld, Marshal Land's Five Corps clashed with a Prussian advance guard commanded by Prince Louis Frederick, the King's cousin. The Prussian force was routed, and Prince Louis himself killed in combat with a quartermaster of the French 10th Hussars. Shit. Three days later, Lan made contact with a large Prussian force near Jena and sent news to Napoleon. The French Emperor, believing he'd found the main Prussian army, rapidly issued orders for his corps to concentrate for battle at Jena. Bernadotte's one Is this where it all kicks off then? three corps were to cross the Sala and fall on the Prussian flank from the north. But Napoleon was wrong. Lan faced a 35,000 strong Prussian rearguard, okay. commanded by General Hohenlohe. Hohenlohe? The main Prussian army, 52,000 men under the Duke of Brunswick, was further north, moving straight into the path of Davout's three corps. Ooh. In warfare, there is but one favorable moment the great art is to seize it. The Battle of Jena began at 6.30 a.m. on the 14th of October, in thick fog. Marshal Land's Five Corps already had a toehold on the plateau west of the town and river. His first task was to drive back the Prussians and win room for the rest of the French army, arriving by the hour to deploy. His infantry led the way, and fierce fighting broke out for the villages of Kospeda, Klosowitz, and Lutzeroda. Meanwhile, Augereau's Seven Corps advanced through a ravine, emerging onto the plateau on Land's left flank, while Sult's Four Corps climbed steep oh, tracks to all form off when right. this fire. Napoleon joined Lan in the centre of the battlefield, organising a 25-gun battery to support the attack on Wurzenheiligen. Oh shit. The village was won, but then lost to a determined Prussian counterattack. So they got it, but then they lost it. This is insane. Yeah, look. Yeah. So on the this right, is what we need to be looking at. Around 10am, Sult's infantry secured Klosowitz. Right but was counter-attacked on its right flank, near Rudigan. Ah. A decisive charge by Salt's light cavalry drove off the Prussians, routing their infantry okay. and capturing two enemy colours. That's colours of standards. Corps began to arrive on the plateau, its fearless but impetuous commander, Marshal Ney, ignored orders and dived into the fighting around Wurzenheiligen, becoming briefly cut off by a Prussian counterattack and having to be rescued by guard cavalry. 
Oh dear. Yeah. General Hohenlohe oh. was expecting the arrival of 15,000 more troops under General Ruschel at any moment. Until then, he remained largely inactive, shoring up his line and ordering limited counterattacks. But he had run out of time. Napoleon had begun the day with just 25,000 men. By 12.30, a steady stream of reinforcements what? brought his strength up to 96,000. Yeah, this is all the, all the men versus the like the rear guard, past the it? Imperial guard, mm. one young soldier, eager to be sent into action, called out, Forward! Napoleon stopped and demanded to know who had spoken, then rebuked the soldier as a beardless youth who ought not to offer advice until he too had commanded in 30 battles. <laughs> Put but that little man in his place. Arrived. Although the guard, to its frustration, remained in reserve, the other French corps were ordered <coughs> forward in a general attack. <laughs> the Prussian army began to give ground. At first, it kept its discipline. But Being able to hold off for that long, though. Yeah. Route. But he just said, like, the, the men kept their discipline, but I think it's all about to go. I mean, 35 up. against 96,000. Yeah. You, I mean, for Ben, you've yeah, 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 yeah. off for quite a while yeah. enough. Like, yeah. You've done as much yeah, as you could. Yeah, you've done as much as you can. Done. Okay. General attack. The Prussian army began to give ground. At first, it kept its discipline but then disintegrated into a general rout. Murat's cavalry were launched in pursuit, riding down and sabering hundreds of fleeing Prussians. General Ruchel's two divisions finally arrived at the worst possible moment. They briefly held up five corps advance, but were soon outflanked, broken That's up by cannon so fire. so unfortunate. Imagine just mm. turning up to that and just getting blasted. Your marshal must be seeing double. <laughs> Meanwhile, 12 miles to the north, near Auerstadt, Marshal Davout was marching southwest, expecting to fall on the Prussian left wing at Jena. Mm. Instead, he encountered the Duke of Brunswick's main Prussian army, heading north to take up new positions. Davout's three corps, 27,000 men and 48 oh, no. guns, was about to face odds of two to one. While Bernadotte's one corps, which had orders to support them, not looking good for to be Napoleon's seen. men. Davout, nicknamed the Iron Marshal, showed no signs of alarm. Do you think they're going to be able to hold it? I, I don't know, but are. the way he's already approached this is he's not scared and he's he's going in there like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going into battle and this let's, is not going to go, go well. Let's go for it. Let's, well, go, let's for go for it. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be I admire that. Like, oh. I, I'm not showing no fear to my men. I, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. already seen what how this can go. Yeah, yeah. I'm going in hard. Let's go. It. The way you got to hope for it is you're like, oh, well, hopefully they've destroyed that rear guard so yeah. much that the rest of the army just catch these boys up. Yeah, you can only hope that as long as you hold off that they're going to come out the tree and give you a helping hand. That's it. But yeah. until then, you've got to hide. You've got to hold off. Showed no signs of alarm. He formed his first division into a defensive line centered on the village of Hassenhausen. His infantry forming squares to repel a series of cavalry charges by General Blücher's advance guard. His other two mm. infantry divisions arrived to strengthen the Go line, on. standing firm. In the face of repeated Prussian attacks. Mate, just what you need. But Prussian movements were slow and poorly coordinated. Mm. Nor they did just they went head on. their numerical advantage to try and outflank Davu. At a crucial moment, the Duke of Brunswick oh. was shot through the eyes, a wound that proved fatal. King Frederick William. <laughs> He's just looking at him like. Bro. Come on. Now I've got to deal with this shit. <laughs> like, you guys just taking a day off. Come on. <laughs> Literally, it's like that. He's just, like, He's just taking a day off. <laughs> it's like when your area manager comes down from work. Don't worry about him. He's new. <laughs> just, oh, that would be the worst. <laughs> oh, shit. Several Prussian units remained uncommitted. But the king no, convinced they the thought they were... French army under Napoleon 
dithered. Around 12.15, Marshal Davout counter-attacked. Oh my army god. They, not, not only did they defend it, they beat him. Davu had won a stunning victory against the odds, but at a heavy price. His corps suffered 25% casualties. One man in four well killed or done, wounded. Well done, boys. Insane. Like, I know I'm saying I'm well done to deaths, but like in war, like the, the result. See, it's not got. it's not down to the well done to the deaths. It's well done to the the tactics and being able yeah. to hold that off. He's yeah, literally yeah. just got in and there then, and then win. And yeah, then and win. win it and push yeah. them away. Like, Again, a lot of psycho psychology has to be put into place because they did think they were facing the whole army, but still to be able to hold up and then. Like make them believe that yeah. is is good enough, you know. That's, it's it's insane. It's ridiculous. Tell the marshal that he is general. Sorry. Tell the marshal that he his generals and his troops have gained everlasting claims on my gratitude by Napoleon. When news reached Napoleon that Marshal Davout had engaged and defeated the main Prussian army, yeah. he reacted first with disbelief, then heaped praise upon the Iron Marshal, later awarding mm. him the title Duke of Auerstadt. Marshal Bernadotte, in contrast, was nearly court-martialed oh. for failing True, to though, support. True though, that's fair. Well done, well played. Yeah. Napoleon's army began a masterful pursuit of the beaten Prussians, Jeez. giving them no time to regather their strength. It's the rapid speed it of his mobility, the small armies he's just made him stop. just push through everything. Yeah, man, he just don't Jeez. stop. Napoleon's troops, led by Davout's heroic Three Corps, entered Berlin. The next day, General Hohenlohe surrendered at Prenzlau. At Lübeck, General Blücher and 20,000 Prussians were driven out of the city in heavy fighting and forced to surrender. Insane. While 25,000 Prussians besieged at Magdeburg surrendered to Marshal Ney. Prussia's army had been devastated by a Napoleonic blitzkrieg. May. In just 33 days, Prussia had lost 20,000 dead, oh, 140,000 prisoners, 800 guns, and 250 standards. So, someone in the comments the other day was saying the standards were a big thing back then because it dates back to like uh, medieval times when you had the standard. Like the more when you like won, you put a sigil like you like if you won a battle, yeah. you put a mark on your standard. And obviously your standard never got taken, it's representative of you and your army. So if you lose your standard, then obviously it's a big thing. So 250 standard losses as well, oh, do you know what I mean? 800 guns. Because again, guns are just more yeah. weapons you're giving them to use. Yeah. Like, it's insane. 140,000 prisoners and yeah. 20,000 dead. It was a humiliation that proud Prussians like General Blücher would neither forget nor forgive. Unlike Saxony, King Frederick William refused to make peace with Napoleon. He continued to hold out in East Prussia, trusting in the approaching Russian armies to rescue his kingdom. Hmm. Despite another glorious victory for Napoleon and the Grande Armée, the war was not won yet. No. Napoleon Bonaparte was one of the greatest military commanders of Insane. all time. Insane. But who were some of the worst? I really enjoyed that episode. What about yourself? Yeah, man. Perfect. It's... I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the next one and talking about what happened in this one in the next video. If you're enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But we're just going to catch you in the next one. In a bit.